each and every one lift your voice, bless him. Bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him, bless him. Link a ton of us at the record, your band and a bobosa. Yakatana Mamma Sita Ricatia Bande de Debus Yakatana Mamma Sita Nakatana Mande de Debus Sete de Bebe Yakatana Mamma de Debus Salakatana Babande Babande de Bobos Shalakatana Babande de Debus Salakatana Babande de Debus Yakatana Babande de Debus Sita Nakatana Mamma de Debus Salabande de Debus Ya kata la babande de de bosita la mamande de de bosa la babande de 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 bosa ya. Ya kata la babande de 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 bosita la kata la babande de 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 bosa la babande ya. Ya kata la babande de 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 bosita la babande de 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 bosa la babande ya. Ya kata la babande de de bosita la mamande de bosa la babande la babande ya. Lika tana ba te de 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 bosi tana mama de 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 bosa na ba ba ya. Ya kata na ba ba de 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 bosi tana ba ba de 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 bosa na ba ba. Ya kata na ba ba ke te de 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 bosi tana ba ba te de ba bosa. Ya kata na ba ba de 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 bosi tana ba ba de 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 bosa. Ya kata na ba ba se te de 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 bosa tana ba ba te de ba bosa. Ya kata na mama de 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 bosita na mama de 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 bosada baba. Ya kata na mama de 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 bosada baba de 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 bosada kata na baba. Ya kata na baba sita na baba de 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 bosada baba ta. Ya kata na baba sita na mama sita na kata ya ma. Ya kata na baba sita na baba de 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 bosada baba ni. Ya kata na baba de 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 bosita na baba ni. Ya kata na baba de 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 bosita na baba ni. Ya kata na baba de 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 bosita na baba de de babu. Ya kata na baba de de 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 baba de. Shara kata na baba ni. 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 Lord, we give you praise. Oh, Lord, we give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. Lord, we give you glory. We bless your name. Pray in tongues, everyone, please, if you come. Pray in tongues, lift your voice. Shata kala basita lika tala kuta lika ta Ia kata luka tia makote deke tia mandele bosa Ia kata na babandele de bosita da katia mandele bosa da kataya Ia kata na babakita ni bosi a mandele bobosa Ia kata na babasita ni katia mandele bosa Ia kata na mama sita ni katia mandele bosa Ia kata na babasita ni katia mandele bosa Ia kata la mama sita di kati amande de bosa. Ia kata la mama sita di kati amande de bosia. Shara kata la babande de 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 bosa la babande. Ia kata la babande de 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 bosa. Ia kata la baba sita de bemente de bemente de 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 bo. Ia kata la babande de 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 bosa la babande. Lord we give you praise. Lord we give you praise. In Jesus. Precious name, hallelujah. I want you to find someone that you're going to pray for. You're going to say, Lord, may you surprise my brother this year. May you surprise my sister this year. Financially, maritally, in health, in business, in career. Lord, may you surprise my brother. May you surprise my sister this year. Lift your voice. Find someone to pray for. Lift your voice, everybody. Shata kalabasita How many are praying? Pray for your brother. Pray for your sister. Pray. Lord, may you surprise my brother. Surprise him or her. Surprise my brother. Surprise my sister with testimonies. 
career testimonies, financial testimonies, marital testimonies, business testimonies. Yes, in the name of Jesus. 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 Mighty Father, I pray. Divine surprise. Divine surprise. Divine surprise upon my brother. Divine surprise upon my sister. Divine surprise. Divine surprise. Divine surprise. Divine surprise. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Master Tali Katiri Mesendi. Yakatala Babasa. Father Katala Makondo. Shala Katala Mamande. Yakatala Babande. Yakatala Babande. Yakatala Basita Li Katia Mande Rebusia. Ia kata la babande de 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 busi la kata la babande ya shata kala kuta kula kia kuta la mande ia kata lo kwatulu kuti amakote zala kata la paki amante de busa ia kata la pasita li katia ia kata makaya kaya 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 surprise my brother surprise this torture surprise our lives of father financially maritally in business in career in our host in every single Lord may you surprise us uh, with uncommon testimonies uh, and common breakthroughs uh, and common change of level in the name of Jesus Masatali katia mande rebusa ya katala babasa ya katala masindali katia mande rebusa ya katala babasa ndali bosia ya katala mama sende lelele rebusa la kataya bandi Lord we give you praise Lord we give you glory we bless your holy name. We bless your holy name. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' precious name. Hallelujah. Amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to pray. Acts chapter 12, verse number 1. Acts chapter 12 and verse number 1. Now about that time, Herod the king stretched out his hand to harass some from the church father as we are enjoying these blessings we frustrate the agenda of herod against any of us any agenda of darkness to stretch out any form of harassment against any one of us we frustrate it we scatter it every harassment from herod marital harassment healthy harassment financial harassment career harassment against any among us in the church we scatter you we frustrate you we destroy you get hold of somebody's hand and pray in unity pray in agreement lift your voice lift your voice lift your voice lift your voice we are frustrating every agenda of harassment against any among us against any among us against some among us in the name of jesus in the name of jesus none among us uh, shall be harassed uh, in the name of jesus in the name of jesus every agenda every plan of the devil to stretch out his hand uh, to harass some uh, of the pastors uh, some of the leaders uh, some of the members uh, some of our family members uh, in this church uh, we harass you we frustrate you we scatter you every harassment of darkness uh, against PSC, every harassment of darkness uh, against the pastors uh, against the leaders uh, against the members uh, we harass you we harass you we scatter you we frustrate you we command you to catch fire we command you to catch fire you will you never succeed you will never prevail whether you want to use sickness whether you want to use rebellion whether you want to use death whether you want to use any kind of shame any kind of defamation any kind of calamity we scatter you 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 you shall never succeed you shall never prosper yes we scatter you we scatter you right now we we scatter you right now. We scatter you right now. In the name of Jesus. Mashataki amande rebusa. Ikatala baba sita li pasi amande rebusia. Iakatali busi amande rebusa. Likatala masende li pasi amande rebusa. In Jesus precious name we have prayed hallelujah Amen. i said hallelujah Amen. you see whenever we are praying we have to pray with energy
Hallelujah. Amen. Don't pray as if you don't want to pray. This is a serious matter now. Amen. When Herod is stretching out his hand to harass. And in the process, what did he do? Verse number two. What would this harassment lead to? Killing. Death. Then he killed James. In his harassment agenda, he killed James, the brother of John. So you must pray with energy. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. We're going to take this prayer again. Every herald stretching out his hand to harass some among us. Some of the pastors. Now he doesn't target everybody. He says some. 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 That means he will try to hit where it will pain you the most. So we are going to announce every demonic agenda of harassment against some among us. We scatter it by fire. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Shata kalabasita likati amandelebu. Yakata lipasi amandelebu sa. Yakata labasa. Every agenda of darkness to harass some among us. To harass them financially. Any form of financial harassment. Marital harassment. Ministry harassment. Spiritual harassment. Office harassment. Workplace harassment. Business harassment. Any kind of harassment. Academic harassment. Yes, Almighty Father. Against any among us. Against some among us. Some of the pastors. Some of the leaders. Some of the members. We curse you. We curse you. We destroy every such harassment. 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 In the name of Jesus. 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 Mashata kiamande rebusa. Ia katalabasa. Every form of harassment against the church, against the pastors, against our families, against the leaders, against the members of the church. We curse you in the name of Jesus. We destroy you in the name of Jesus. We tear you apart. 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 In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. Amen. Lastly, Psalm 105 and verse number 37. Psalm 105 and verse number 37. The Bible says he also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. Father, we declare that there is none feeble among us in this church. There is none sick, there is none weak, there is none poor, there is none stagnated, there is none stranded in this camp, there is none confused in this camp. Lift your voice and make that declaration. Lift your voice and make that declaration. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Everyone make that declaration. They shall declare a thing and it shall be established and light will begin to shine upon all their ways. Declare there is none feeble in this camp. There is none feeble in this church. There is none stranded. There is none weak. There is none sick. There is none poor. There is none stranded. There is none stagnated. There is none poor in this church in the name of Jesus. There is none confused in this camp. In the name of Jesus, there is none feeble. There is none feeble among us. Among us, there is none feeble. In the name of Jesus, there is none maritally feeble, financially feeble. Yes, in the name of Jesus, there is none spiritually feeble. In this camp, we are all strong. We are all vibrant. We are all making it. We are all moving forward. We are all making progress. We are all breaking forward. 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 We are all breaking forward in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Mashata kiamande rebusa. Yakata li posiamande rebusa. Yakata li katia fande rebusa. Yakata la babasa. Rakata la babasa. 
rakata la babasa yekete lipasi apakuta shatakutaka 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 karabakutaya 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 kereboka 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 karabaka karabanda shatakia bakutakia kutakia yakata there is none fable there is none fable in this camp in the name of jesus there is no pastor fable in this camp there is no leader fable in this camp there is no member fable in this camp there is no marriage that is fable in this camp there is no business person who is fable in this camp in the name of jesus in the name of jesus we are all strong we are all moving forward we are all rising higher we are all scaling higher in the name of jesus 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 mashata kalamandelele bosara bataya in jesus precious name we have prayed hallelujah i said hallelujah all that must be well in your life is now well in the name of jesus i said in the name of jesus all that must be well is now well in your life i said it is now well in your life in the mighty name of jesus christ i said in the name of jesus please you believe that can i hear loud a shout of amen give the lord a mighty shout of praise i said give the lord a mighty shout of praise hallelujah you may please be seated we welcome each one of us to the house of the lord shake hands with two three people tell them you are welcome to the house of the lord praise the lord hallelujah i said hallelujah please remember that our theme is making maximum impact and we are encouraging each one of us to read two books that are very important in this season one authored by my wife pastor mrs lois banda woman of impact and the other one written by me by the grace of god the title is making maximum impact those are our reference materials so please you need to look at them and our anchor passage is matthew chapter 5 verses 13 to 16 matthew chapter 5 please let me have it uh, we've read it in new king james version for quite some time now can we read it from the message bible the message bible praise god let me tell you why you are here <laughs> i tell your neighbor i want to know why i'm here you are here to be salt seasoning that brings out the god flavors of this earth <laughs> if you lose your saltness, how will people test godliness? You have lost your usefulness and will end up in the garbage. Nobody under the sound of my voice will end up in the garbage in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Verse number 14. Now, here is another way to put it. You are here to be light, bringing out the God colors. Now, so as salt, you bring out the God flavors. As light, you bring out God colors. <laughs> Your financial life shall bring out God colors. Your marital life shall bring out God colors. Everything about you shall reflect God colors. Praise God. Says you are here to be light. Bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be kept. If a keep of secrets, just know that God is not one of those secrets to be kept. To be put under. God must be brought out in your life, in your character. In all the things that pertain to your life. God is not a secret to be kept. We are going public with this. As public as a city on a hill. 
Glory be to God. Verse number 15 now, hear this. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bucket, do you? I'm putting you on a light stand. Somebody is already positioned on the light stand. And the light that you are will shine brighter and brighter in the name of Jesus. Verse number 16. Now, it says, now, now that I have put you there on a hilltop, on a light stand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you prompt people to open up with God. This generous father in heaven. So that is our anchor passage for the season. But reading it from this version of the Bible. Praise the name of Jesus. You need to reflect on this passage, especially as given in this version. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now, last Thursday, we began an important discussion looking at what we are calling imperatives of impact. Imperatives of impact. What are the drivers of impact? What are the ingredients of impact? What are the things that we need to position ourselves in in order to achieve impact on our generation? Praise the name of Jesus. I said, praise the name of Jesus. And please, first of all, before we continue with that discussion, let us have a common understanding of what we mean by making maximum impact. What is to make maximum impact? Hear this. To make maximum impact means to make a mark that cannot be erased. To make a mark that cannot be erased. To make a mark that cannot be ignored. To bring out results in business, in ministry, in the family, in politics, in your profession that cannot be forgotten. Results that even your critics will salute you for. They may not like the idea that you have brought out that kind of result, but they cannot ignore it. They cannot help but talk about it. Whether in a negative way, but they will talk about it. To make maximum impact is to make indelible impact. Impact that cannot be erased. Impact that cannot be ignored. Impact that cannot be forgotten in a hurry. And I'm believing God that even in this season, grace to make maximum impact is landing on someone here in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I said in the name of Jesus. Amen. But what are the imperatives of impact? What are the things that should drive the kind of impact that we are talking about? And on Thursday, we looked at the imperative of attitude. Attitude. Many times when we hear of impact, we usually think of the things we should carry out in order to bring out the kind of impact that we are talking about. And I did emphasize the fact that in life, it is not just what you do that matters. It is also who you are and what you are that is also equally important. There is what you need to be before you can do. There is what to be before you can talk about what to do. And attitude is about what you must be. What you must be. Many people don't have problems carrying out things, doing business and carrying out all kinds of activities. But their challenge is that they do it with the wrong attitude. What's the point of doing business with a defeated mindset? 
So the first thing that must happen is to make sure that you are in the right frame of mind. Let this mind also be in you which was in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2 and verse number 5. Jesus had a mind. He did not just have an ability to do things, the kind of things that he did. But he also had a mind, an attitude that informed the kind of success and exploits that he carried out in his earthly ministry. Think of yourselves. The way Christ Jesus thought of himself, thinking. Can I have it in NIV? Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Does it say your ability? It says what? Your attitude. Your attitude. You may have the power, but if you have the wrong attitude, you will still not make it. So you need a combination of the right attitude and then the right abilities. The right attitude and the right abilities, a combination of the two is what will generate impact in your generation. And we looked at nine attitudes that you ought to have as a child of God if you are to make impact. But for this service, and within the limited time that we have, I want us to look at another imperative of impact. It is called burning zeal. What is it? Burning zeal. Burning zeal. Burning zeal. I want us to know that impact is impossible without a burning zeal. A burning zeal. Why did Jesus... Do the kind of things that he did. I believe that one of the reasons was that he had this burning zeal within him. He pursued his life assignment with burning zeal. It is not enough to know what must be done in order to generate the kind of impact that you have to generate. You need to approach your life assignment with burning zeal. Somebody shout burning zeal. It was zeal, burning zeal for that matter, that helped Christ Jesus to cause waves in his earthly ministry. Let's look at it. John chapter 2, for example, verses 13 to 17. New King James Version, please. John chapter 2, verses 13 to 17. Now the Passover of the Jews was at hand, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Somebody's going up here. And he found in the temple... Those who sold oxen and sheep and doves and the money changers doing business. Everyone doing business against your destiny shall scatter today in the name of Jesus. When he had made a whip of cords, he drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changers money and overturned the tables. And he said to those who sold doves, Take these things away. Do not make my father's house a house of merchandise. Verse number 17. Then his disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house has eaten me up. Unless zeal for your life assignment eats you up, you cannot generate the kind of impact that is expected of you. Zeal must eat you up. Zeal for the assignment. Says zeal for your house. If God has given you a life assignment, and I know he has done it. He has given you an assignment to accomplish. Nobody was born without a purpose. Nobody was born without a life assignment to accomplish here on earth. And once you locate that assignment, you have to pursue it with what? Burning zeal. Burning zeal. Burning zeal. There are so many people that are complaining that nothing is working. How zealous are you concerning the assignment? The question is, what do we mean by burning zeal? Let's define some few things here. What is burning zeal? Burning zeal. Number one. Burning zeal means... In a passion for an assignment 
that guarantees your portion in excellence. Inner passion that generates your portion. Inner passion that guarantees your portion in excellence as you carry out that assignment. It is the level of your passion that determines the level of your portion in life. Those that are not passionate have no portion in distinction. It is when you carry out an assignment with passion that you get your portion in excellence, in attainment and accomplishment. In a passion for an assignment that guarantees your portion in distinction, your portion in excellence, even as you attain what you have to attain in the assignment. Number two, inner passion. Number two, burning zeal means inner excitement. Generated by the desire to achieve something greater. Inner excitement. And this excitement is informed by the desire. The thought of achieving something greater. I have to achieve something greater. Something enviable. For God. For my nation. For the church. For my family. Inner excitement. Guaranteed or generated or informed by the desire to achieve something higher, something greater in life. You need it. And as you are listening to me, you are getting it in the name of Jesus Christ. People may not understand it. Why you are so zealous about it, but there is this inner thing, inner excitement, inner joy. Inner joy. That is driving you to push forward in the assignment. Number three. What is burning zeal? Hear this. Burning zeal means inner fire. Inner fire. Somebody shout inner fire. inner fire. That drives a person to achieve more in life. Inner fire. That drives an individual. That drives a person to achieve more in life. To achieve more in life. Oh my God. Number four. What is burning zeal? Hear this. Burning zeal signifies an inner burden. What is it? An inner burden that can only be lifted through achievement. That is why people talk about, I have a burden for the poor. I have a burden to pray. I have a burden to win souls to Jesus. And they are never satisfied. That burden is never lifted until they see people coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Until they render some assistance to the target that they have that burden for. Some people have a burden for politics. Others have a burden for something else. Different people have burdens for different things. And we are saying that burning zeal is that inner burden in the believer that can only be lifted, that can only be settled through attainment. When you attain it, you are settled. When you attain it, you are satisfied. That is burning zeal. Hear this. Burning zeal is that inner crave. In a crave, deep-seated desire that drives you to do something bigger than what you have done before. People with a burning zeal are those who say, over my dead body, I would rather die than not pursue it. I would rather burn than not pursue it. I would rather drown than not pursue it. If you have not reached this stage, of approach in the undertaking of your life assignment, just know that you will get ordinary results. You cannot get extraordinary results without this kind of drive that I'm trying to describe to you. Praise the name of Jesus. I said praise the name of Jesus. Jesus had it. Apostle Paul had it. Everybody who made a mark in scripture had it. We must also have it if we want to have impact. 
praise the name of Jesus. Now hear this. The question now is, what are the boosters of zeal? What are the boosters of zeal? What are the kind of things that will generate zeal inside of you? Number one, knowledge. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 2. Romans chapter 10 and verse number 2. Knowledge. For I bear them witness that they have zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. There is a dimension of zeal that is out of stupidity, out of ignorance. That's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about a dimension of zeal that is informed by knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of your life assignment. Knowledge of the will of God concerning your life. Knowledge of the kind of target, goal that God wants you to achieve in life. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2, Hebrews chapter 12 and verse number 2, the Bible says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him. He had knowledge of the joy that was set before him. He had knowledge of the joy that was set before him. That is why he approached his assignment with burning zeal. Burning zeal. Because there was a joy he saw. There was a revelation of the joy that was set before him. Knowledge. Knowledge. Some people don't have this kind of zeal because they don't know what they are up and about for. They don't know. They don't know their life assignment. They are not convinced about their life assignment. That is why they approach it with a laissez-faire attitude. A haphazard attitude. Now hear this. Boosters of zeal. Number two. Number two. Is called a high sense of responsibility. When a man has a high sense of responsibility. He approaches his assignment with maturity. He approaches his assignment with that burning zeal because he knows that I'm carrying a lot of people with me in the destiny that God has ordained for me. Can I say this to you? The destiny, the assignment that God has given you is not just for you. There are people whose attainment of their own individual destinies is dependent on your attainment of your destiny. And that should generate a high sense of responsibility as to how you handle yourself and the affairs of life. Your destiny is a determining factor for the accomplishment of the destinies of so many others. Now, PRCC came around and you came around to be part of PICC or to benefit from PICC. Why? Because the destiny of PICC is a determining factor on the accomplishment of your destiny. So as a pastor, as your pastor, I have a duty to handle myself with a high sense of responsibility so that I don't put your destinies at risk. What happens to your destiny? Hear this has a knock-on effect on the destinies of other people. The attainment of those destinies are dependent on your destiny. Whatever is happening, good or bad, to your destiny will have a knock-on effect on the destinies of those whose attainment of those destinies is dependent on the attainment of your own destiny. I, I hope I'm making sense. 1 Chronicles chapter 4. Verses 9 to 10. Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called his name Jabez saying, Because I bore him in pain. Verse number 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, hear this. All oh, that you would bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory, that your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. Now hear this. That I may not what? Cause pain. The trouble, the restriction, the limitation, the confusion of Jabez was what? 
causing pain on others. Have you seen it? Bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Why? Because my limited space, the curses and the confusions that I'm suffering are causing pain. But when you deliver me from all these things, I will cease to cause pain. Your lack of money is disadvantaging the nation. We have high levels of unemployment in this nation because you have not yet set up the company that God had ordained you to set up so you could employ 300 people. You see what I'm saying? Whatever is happening to your personal individual destiny has a knock-on effect on the destinies of others. Whose attainment of those destinies is dependent on what is happening to your destiny. Think of a situation where you are not able to raise enough money to support those that should have been supported. That means those people will not be what? Supported. Others may come in, but not at the level of support that you would have provided if you had the resources. What if I had not obeyed God to be used of him by his grace to set up this ministry? What would have happened to your life and to your destiny? How God would have provided another way, yes, but was that going to be the idea? Was that going to be the idea? Because God has the idea. And then he has the permissible. What can I do? Because those that we are supposed to provide the idea have disobeyed. Have decided to rebel. So let me make a permissible arrangement. Now hear this. It happens in marriages. Where, for example, a husband misbehaves. The whole marriage, the whole family, wife and children will be scattered. The whole thing. Now, people must understand that they are not here on earth just for themselves. They are also here on earth for others. Whatever you do, good or bad, will have a knock-on effect on others around you. Those that are connected to you. Those whose survival, success, and attainment of destiny is dependent on your own. Your own destiny. The attainment of your destiny. Whatever happens to my destiny, good or bad, has a knock-on effect on the destinies of those whose destinies are connected to my destiny. So you have to be very careful. And that calls for what? A high sense of responsibility. A high sense of responsibility. Are you getting the message? Boosters of zeal. Number three. Scriptural examples. When we read scriptural examples of people that had burning zeal, that should boost our own zeal in our time. Scriptural examples. Scriptural examples. In Isaiah 51 verses 1 to 2. Isaiah 51 verses 1 to 2. Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness, you who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you were hewn. It's talking about mentorship, looking at the examples of others. And to the horror of the pit from which you were dug. What is he talking about? Verse number two. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah who bore you. Those are the ones he's talking about when he talks about the rock. And the whore. He's talking about Abraham and Sarah. says, look unto them. For I called him alone. I blessed him and increased him. If I did this to him. You better look at him. What did he do? Do the same. And this is going to be the result. I will bless you and increase you. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 12. That you do not become sluggish, but imitate those 
who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Imitate those that demonstrated burning zeal in the scriptures. Look at them and imitate the example. Do exactly what they did and you will see the kind of results that will accrue to your kind of assignment. Praise the name of Jesus. I said praise the name of Jesus. Now hear this. Let's look at the second imperative very quickly. Number one is burning zeal. Number two is forcefulness. Forcefulness. Many times assignments fail. Destinies crumble for lack of forcefulness. Forcefulness. What do I mean by forcefulness? We are talking about approaching an assignment with intensity of physical strength, physical vigor. Approaching an assignment with intensity of physical strength. Forcefulness will also mean being emphatic or vehement in approach. You are vehement in approach. You are emphatic. You are not doing it slowly and sluggishly. As if somebody is forcing you to do it. Unfortunately, that is the approach so many people have taken to their life assignments. What is forcefulness? Hear this. Forcefulness will also mean the ability to push forward despite oppositions. The ability, being able to push forward, even in the midst of oppositions, it means refusal to take no for an answer. Refusal to settle for the second best. You apply force. You defy struggles. You defy difficulties of the assignment. You defy discouragements that are coming from external forces. You defy fear. You defy lessness. You defy tiredness. You say, no ways. I'll pursue this. That is forcefulness. In Matthew chapter 11 verse 12. From the days of John the Baptist. Until now, the approach has not changed. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. Now that violence is not negative. I know that violence has negative connotations. But that's not what he's talking about there. The violence is talking about is the eagerness of heart with which the people received the kingdom of God. The message of salvation. For the first time in the history of ministry, huge crowds of people began to gather around a prophet by the name John. The Bible says the whole Judea came to John at the river Jordan. The whole what? Judea. It was the first of its kind. So when the Bible says... The kingdom of heaven suffers violence. The picture we must have is that of a mighty army that is descending on a city. That is how mighty Jews descended into the kingdom of God. He's talking about eagerness. When he says the violent take it by force, they are simply saying you must get it with eagerness of heart. That this thing must work out. I must achieve this result. It is not permitted that I do not achieve it. It is not permitted that I should not achieve it. It is not permitted that man should stop me from achieving it. It is not permitted that a medical report should stop me from having a child. No! You stand your ground. Are you listening to me now? You stand your ground. Most of you are too sluggish. Uh, it's not work. Uh, it must work. You must tell your heart never to believe that it cannot work. You must tell your heart. What must you address? Your heart. 
Tell your heart, my heart, this thing, it is not permitted that it should not work. It must work. It, I must get it right. I must get it good. And it shall work out. That is our approach in this stage. When I want us to do something, like construction, I don't, money is not a consideration for me. I want to consider God. I want to consider who? God. If I ask balance and they tell me they are no sense, I say, shut up. We are going to do it. We are what? It's not about your balance. That is why your books are not balancing. You are looking at balance. Look at God. Tell your neighbor, look at God. Hey, we cannot do it that way. We must do it. Because money is available. Money is what? Available. Money is available. Tell your neighbor, forcefulness. Now, two things very quick. Number one. <laughs> what are the drivers of forcefulness? What are the things that will help you to be forceful? Number one, a sense of purpose. A sense of mission. A sense of purpose. A sense of mission. A sense of purpose. A sense of mission. A man who understands his mission is a man of force. He's a man of force. He's a man who presses forward. He presses forward. He presses forward. Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 to 14. Philippians chapter 3 verses 13 to 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended, but one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Look at the next verse. I press towards the goal. You can't press unless you understand the goal. So you must have a sense of mission. What is my goal? Have I reached it? If the answer is no, you press forward. Unless you press, you remain oppressed. In the land of the average. God has never called anybody to live an average life. He said, you are a light. You are what? A light, a light, a light of the world. A light of the world. Now that the men light a lamp and put it on a basket, they don't. So God has never called you to live an oblivious life. I press toward the goal. Paul, why are you pressing? It's because I understand the goal. I know what I'm supposed to achieve. I have a sense of mission. I have a sense of purpose. And when he did not accomplish it, he knew I have not yet what? Accomplished it. That is what he tells us in verse number 13. Put it back there. Verse number 13. He says, I do not count myself to have what? Attend it. No. No. I know it. And I will also know when I have attended it. And he told his son Timothy, he said, I have what? Finished what? The rest. Now I have accomplished it. I have accomplished it. I have done it. So you need to have a sense of mission. This force will not mean anything to you unless and until you understand your purpose. Unless and until you embrace what I call a sense of mission. A sense of mission where you understand that you are not here on earth to waste God's oxygen. You are not here on earth just to be added to the number that the earth has got 7.5 billion people and you are one of them. No. I did not come on earth to just consume God's oxygen and add to the burdens of the nation. No. I have a sense of mission and I apply force to achieve that mission. Number two, what are the drivers of forcefulness? Hear this. Number two, burning desire for success and attainment. Burning desire for success and attainment. The desire to attain it will generate force within you. 
like Samuel did in Bethlehem. When the Almighty God told him to go to Bethlehem to Jesse. Because he had wanted Samuel to anoint one of the sons of Jesse to be king over Israel instead of Saul. Now hear this. When he did not find the right candidate, the man became forceful. He inconvenienced everybody in Bethlehem. At least in the household of Jesse. Everyone was inconvenienced. How do we know that? 1 Samuel 16, 11. Quickly. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse number 11. Look. It says, Samuel said to Jesse, Are all the young men here? Because they couldn't get the right candidate. Then he said, There remains yet the youngest. And there he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, send and bring him, for we will not sit down. I don't care your age, Jesse. We will not sit down till David comes here. I did not come here to, my mission is not to sit, but to anoint someone to be king over Israel. As long as I don't find him, I will not sit. I will not be settled. I will not be satisfied. I will push forward until the result is achieved. Until the result is what? Achieved. We will not sit down. I think Jesus was saying to himself, now this man, can't he see that I'm so old? <laughs> it's no mean achievement to have seven sons. That you are looking for one of them to be king. Can't you see that I am old? He said, no, we are not what? Going to sit down. Tell your neighbor, don't sit down. Don't sit down. Some people, they have a wife, three kids, a car, and a house in the long way in a place called Gulliver, whether you call it Gulliver. <laughs> and you think you have arrived. You think you have arrived. Where do you stay, stay in Gulliver? <laughs> you don't sit down. The path of the just is what? As a shining light that shines more and more unto the perfect day. You can't call the place where you are in achievement more. It's not more yet. Look, if it is more, the Bible says more and more. When you arrive at a place called more, when you look up, you see another more. When you arrive, whenever you arrive at a place called more, M-O-R-E, the moment you arrive there, when you look up, just try to look up, you see another invitation. Hey, there's more here. There's more here. There's more here. There's more here. May God give you more. Yeah. I said, may the Lord give somebody more here. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Please let me finish. Ask anybody, are you learning anything here? So what I'm doing by giving you these two factors, burning zeal and forcefulness, I'm actually killing the Malawian mindset in you. The Malawian what? Mindset of doing things slowly. Going to church? Slowly. I remember there was a man when we were growing up in our village. Very highly educated. I think he was a PhD something. He was too intelligent until he was confused. So he was, you know, he was insane. And the way he was walking, sir. That's the Malawian mindset. When are you going to ask your neighbor, when are you going to arrive? <laughs> Sir, because of that approach, 53 years down the line, we, we are still not able to feed ourselves. Sir, a man walking like this and is going to Blanta will arrive 50 years later. <laughs> but from today, by the power of burning zeal, and by the power of forcefulness, I see you flying into your destiny in the name of Jesus. I see you flying into your destiny in the name of Jesus. I see you flying into your destiny in the name of Jesus. Please, can I hear loud a shout of amen? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Hear this. What are the ingredients of forcefulness? Number one, the sense of purpose. Number two, burning zeal for what? Success and attainment. Number three, the revelation 
or the understanding of the seasonality of life. And this one is even more critical. The revelation or the understanding of the seasonality of life. The fact that if you are 22 years of age today, you will not be 22 years of age forever. That is what I'm talking about. The seasons of life. Life is in seasons. There is a time for every purpose here on earth. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 and verse number 1. To everything there is a what? A season. Now if you have been given a season to do something, you better be forceful. Because once that season expires, you will not be able to do it again. If there is a miracle you want to perform to the glory of God, the right time to perform it is when? Now. Because a time is coming when it will be impossible for you to lift your hand and lay it on someone. It's called the seasonality of life. The seasonality of life. Let's look at this very quickly. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 1 to 4. Just in the interest of time, otherwise you can read the whole chapter. And it's not many verses. Remember now your creator, when? In the days of your youth. That is when you have time. When God gives you time. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be what? Found. There is a time when God is not found. Seek him when he is foundable. When he can be found. When he can be found. When you can actually approach him and he is going to intervene in your situation. Now it says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Before the difficult days come. He is pointing us to the seasonality of life. Before what? The difficult days come. And the years draw near. When you say, I have no pleasure in them. Verse 2. Remember the Lord your God. While the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are not what? Darkened. And when the clouds do not return after the rain. Verse number three. Seek the Lord. Remember the Lord. In that day when the keepers of the house tremble. And the strong men bow down. Well, when the grinder sees. You know what he's talking about here. He says, seek the Lord when these things are still intact. Because a time is coming when the keepers of the house will begin to what? To tremble. Your body will begin to tremble. Because of old age. You don't want to shake, but you're just shaking like this. Not as a matter of fun, but a matter of age. Hey, old man, let's go for corporate soul winning, uh, young man. <laughs> it says, when the strong men bow down, when the grinder sees because they are few, it's talking about teeth falling off because of what? Old age. It says, the grinders will be few <laughs> because they are falling off. <laughs> And here it is. And those that look through the windows grow dim when your eyes cannot see anymore. Eh? Is it Chibade? <laughs> <laughs> so now that you still have eyes, please read your Bible as much as you can. Because a time is coming because of old age, you may not read the Bible. You will just see darkness. <laughs> Rise on your feet, our time is up. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen. Now, pick your writing materials. Pick your writing materials. Let me give you this. How do I exercise forcefulness? What are the things I must be doing to show that I'm being forceful? Number one, keep doing the right things. Keep doing the right things keep doing the right things keep doing the right things number two be focused never allow 
diversions or derailment of any kind in the pursuit of your assignment. Be focused. Number three, be diligent. Be diligent. Number four, be tireless. The Bible says, do not tire in well-doing. Be tireless. But it didn't work yesterday, no, continue again today. It doesn't work today, try it again tomorrow. Be tireless. Be tireless. Be tireless. That is how Apostle Paul was. That is how our master, the Lord Jesus was. He was tireless. These are some of the things to do as a way of demonstrating forcefulness in the pursuit of your assignment. Now may we lift our two hands as we bless the Lord. Lift your voice everyone. Begin to celebrate Jesus. Begin to magnify, exalt and glorify him. Lift your voice everyone. Lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice, lift your voice. Celebrate Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. Lord, we give you praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name. I may not know what you do, but I declare over your life that you shall approach your life assignments with burning zeal and forthfulness in the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus Christ, grace for tirelessness is resting upon your life. Grace for diligence is resting upon your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Please, can I hear a loud shout of amen? amen? Put your hands together for Jesus. <laughs> Lift your voice, everyone. Let's celebrate Jesus. Father, we give you thanks. We have just learned about force. So let's be forceful in our praise of God. In our praying, in our celebration of God, lift your voice, everyone. Let God hear your voice as you bless him. Father, we thank you. We bless you. We honor and exalt your holy name. You are such a good, gracious, compassionate, and holy God. We honor your holy name. You are such a mighty king. We bless you and we love you. In Jesus' precious name. May the Lord bless you. May he give you peace success and prosperity Amen. open doors on every side Amen. divine favor is your portion Amen. in the name of jesus Amen. i said in the name of jesus Amen. all the questions and the, the issues you brought to the house of the lord this morning have been addressed Amen. in the mighty name of jesus christ Amen. your prayers have been answered Amen. all is well with your life Amen. you are protected you are preserved. You are prospering. You are scaling higher. You are moving up higher. In the name of Jesus. I said in the name of Jesus Christ. You are blessed. Testimonies will never cease in your life. Please clap your hands for Jesus. Glory be to God. Psalm 23 and verse number 6. Surely. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. God bless you.